Three years ago, it was touch and go whether Ralph Grasso would even be alive. Cancer runs in the family, but it was still a shock when Ralph got the diagnosis that he had liver cancer. Ralph's daughter, Anna, remembers that day all too well. And it was shocking, because he didn't feel anything in his liver, it was more in his back that was hurting him. It was 2014, and Dr. Amul Majumdar, an interventional radiologist at the London Health Sciences Center, remembers the case vividly. He had no symptoms. He had an, a routine ultrasound done in, in for some kind of vague abdominal pain, and they discovered, in fact, that he has this big tumor, very large tumor in his liver. So then they thought, OK, what are, what are his options? The tumor was too big for a transplant to be considered, and other medical issues meant liver surgery wasn't an option either. That's when Dr. Majumdar broached the idea of attacking the tumor from the inside using a procedure known as Y90 radioembolization. So Y90 is a radioactive substance, okay, that is used as a medical device to treat cancer, okay? So the way that works is you impregnate the Y90 into a type of bead that we inject into the liver. And, and it's a tiny, tiny you know, sphere that's you know, on the size of a microscopic level that goes and it sits in a tumor in the blood vessel and just emits this very high dose radiation. So it's kind of like going inside the tumor and punching it from the inside out. Today, Dr. Majumdar is performing the same procedure on another patient. With approximately 700,000 new cases of liver cancer diagnosed every year around the world, and about 2,000 in Canada alone, Y90 radioembolization is the new, less invasive frontier in fighting cancer. We do an angiogram of their liver through the plumbing of their body, mostly through the groin, sometimes through the wrist. Um, once we've done that kind of angiogram to map out people's anatomy, we're able to plan uh, and calculate doses of radiation using the Y90 product. The dosage and the radioactive microspheres are individually tailored for each patient before being implanted directly into the body. After the procedure, Dr. Majumdar is pleased with the way things went. I'm very happy, everything went very well. Um, she, she did quite well, she basically slept throughout the procedure had minimal to no pain, and then she'll go home a couple hours after the procedure, so it's a very short recovery. Unlike surgery, no long hospital stay, something that saves the healthcare system considerable resources, as was the case with Ralph. Ralph was one of the first Y90 radioembolization patients in Canada. Today, he's incredibly independent, and the treatment has given him his life back. He spends his time tinkering in the garden, and playing with his grandkids. See what they do? He went right back out, like he said, into the garage, working on the machines, helping my mom do things. I go in the shop and try to do whatever I could, if I could, do the tomatoes for the same, up my wife. Looking back on the case, Dr. Majumder marvels at just how effective the treatment was. So this is actually basically three years later. This huge grapefruit is basically completely gone and dead. So he's, he's kind of our poster child for, for Y90. We've taken a, a large tumor, okay, that in a person that was not a surgical candidate and we've essentially cured them. Despite his remarkable recovery, Ralph is only one of about 600 people in Canada who have had the procedure. That's because it's not funded in most provinces. That's what Norm and Sharon Jameson found out when Norm was diagnosed with liver cancer back in May of 2017. As with Ralph, Dr. Majumder recommended the Y90 radioembolization procedure. He said it was his best chance, but he said, unfortunately, you know, the bad news is it's not funded. And um, that was a shock because you just expect as Ontarios, you know, so of course it's it's going to be funded. That's when their four daughters decided to go public and raise money and awareness about the lack of funding. The family set up a GoFundMe page, and the results were staggering. It was so fast that 
by the four days later, it, it went to 19,125 and I shut it down. The Jamesons were lucky. Their community rallied behind them and they were able to access the treatment. Others aren't so lucky. It's very difficult to see a patient in your clinic and want to offer them a therapy that they just cannot afford. Uh, you know, it's very frustrating. And you know, knowing that if they lived in another province, not even another country, another province, that they would get that therapy, that's very frustrating. It's only been a few weeks since the treatment, and today Norm is back for a checkup. But the former MPP's message to his colleagues at Queen's Park is clear. If he sat down and looked at his dollars and cents, how it works, all of that, no reason why it shouldn't be approved at this point. I'm not fighting for myself. I'm, str I'm struggling for the people that would like to make that choice. A choice some other provinces have made, and Dr. Majumder says hopefully the rest of Canada will follow. The outcomes are there to support it. There's more literature and scientific data available now in 2017 than there's been, you know, even back when it became available in those provinces. So the evidence keeps mounting, you know, higher and higher that this should be available for patients in Ontario.